Good morning, folks. That bright active region on the south is in decay here. It was the next step in the slow ramp up back to active sunspots expected in the next few months. Today we're going to hit asteroid Bennu, a weird star, a weirder cosmology claim and new evidence on the catastrophe event. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com and we find the last day on our star with now only the southern coronal hole prominent in the dark bands. Bright active region visible in 193 angstroms as well here. A very calm day overall, so let's go to the solar wind. Considerable variability to the stream, but overall a slightly downward trend, already meandering through calm solar wind conditions, and so Earth's magnetic field is calm and quiet this morning. We're going right out to Bennu. The OSIRIS-REx lander is equipped with the most advanced automatic landing and hazard detection system ever invented. The spacecraft will be able to use multiple mapping techniques to spot the perfect landing zone and can even stop and back up into higher orbit off the close-in analysis when it reveals more danger than was able to be seen from higher up. At the end of the day, the goal is to land, to gather 60 grams of asteroid material and bring it back home to Earth. Up next, we've got a very close-in binary between utterly selfish and possessive stars. Normally, two stars this close would have a major material exchange, either a plasma tongue or accreting gas from one to the other. But in this case, we see the larger, less dense star merely teardrop misshapening towards its binary as the orbit occurs. Now, one has to wonder if this is a rare duo, or if astronomers have merely caught a chance capture as they are just beginning their more intimate interactions, and we're merely in Act 1. Up next, I need you to hold on to these most distant and oldest objects seen in the deepest parts of space. Of course, there are other things like the Methuselah star, which is analyzed to be older than the Big Bang, only 200 light years away, but all in all in the bigger picture, here are the most distant beasts. Now keep this memory ready as we come to Lyman Alpha Blob 6, LAB6, the sixth ultra-distant Lyman Alpha Blob discovered in the cosmos. They are able to notice that this gargantuan mass of material in deep space has infalling gas towards the center, which tells them the source of the incredible UV radiation of the blob must be caused by the central galaxy sitting within the mass. Well, there are some issues with that supposition, but there are two much bigger problems. First, they've never seen infalling gas at the other Lyman Alpha blob, so even if they are correct about LAB6, it doesn't at all help them discover the essence of the others. But also, they are claiming this object sits 18 billion light years away. Now, if you're thinking to yourself that either their redshift dating and distance is way off or the Big Bang couldn't have been 14 billion years ago, you're right on both. Last but not least, hard to believe that every confirmation of a paradigm adds more questions as to its solo performance. They found another major impactor from the Younger Dryas boundary 12 to 13,000 years ago, this one in Syria. Now, on one hand, this does add to the evidence of an impactor at that time, but it also raises questions. Like, how are we getting craters in Syria, Greenland, Chile, and South Africa from around the same time? And then also, airburst microspheral tectite glass beads strewn across the region, again, from the same time period. It should be one or the other, either an airburst or an impactor. Now, while in theory one massive impactor could have airburst just at the top of the sky and managed to spread beads and four pieces of itself across vast distances, it is not a likely astronomical scenario, however, and it still can't explain everything else we're getting at that time. While the great solar flash can indeed explain the impactors, both pushed outward and from the shell ejecta itself, the impactors are sitting astride a suite of events that all come together. Impactors can't flip Earth's field or deliver Nova-level isotopes without completely destroying the Earth. The appropriate takeaway here is that we can now firmly say that impactor events are part of the cyclical disaster, while we continually remind ourselves that there must have been an accomplice. Impactors aren't doing all of these things by themselves. We greatly appreciate your support. If you are looking for more good videos, the entire homepage of suspiciousobservers.org is dedicated to housing the most important videos we have for free. It's the prep work for being an observer. We've got your wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.